it shrinks back. If this is what happens to you when you try to stretch your pizza dough, then this video is for you. There is only one reason why this is happening. You didn't make it rise enough or proof, say whatever you prefer. The point is you didn't wait long enough. You see, we let our dough proof, not just to wait for it to produce all the gas and make it puff up. Those are the most visible things, but today we are only interested in something else. When we have just shaped a dough ball, the gluten is quite strong and tight, and stretching is impossible. This is why you either swear or reach out for the rolling pin. Which is the tool of the devil, by the way. So the main takeaway of this video is do not stretch right after bowling. I know that for some of you that's obvious, but it's also true that loads, like loads of people, are convinced otherwise just because they have watched videos from YouTubers who, with all due respect, maybe lack a bit of knowledge and expertise. Look at these videos, for example. Roll them on top. This is going to rest for at least half an hour. Dressed in the greased pool, covering for another 15 minutes. Your double will hardly be ready to stretch after 30 minutes, let alone 15 minutes. And I won't even mention the option to stretch it immediately after bowling. And if you did it at some point, please let me know in the comments what made you change your mind, how you learned the right way, especially if it was this video. Now, to figure out a timing, there are various factors to consider. I will explain what you need to know and show you useful stuff during this video. So, keep watching because I will also debunk another concept. Common knowledge is that you will struggle with stretching even when your double is too cold. Of course, this is only for those of you who may control temperature fermentation that is in the fridge. But this is one of the many pizza misconceptions out there. We take it for granted without even wondering about how things actually work inside the dough, without Taking into account the formula of the dough itself, you will see that when the dough is ready, stretching a double that comes straight from the fridge doesn't present any problem at all. But it's time to work now. Let's do it. Okay, dough making. First of all, please remember this is not a recipe video because today's topic is something else. So I won't go into details too much. Everything you need to know about my dough is in this video. I will make a simple direct dough around 65% hydration, a bit more. And I got this dough calculator for you that makes all the calculations. So you can find it on my website. Okay, John, now it stays here for a while, then I will split it in half, shape two doubles, and finally we will see together the stretching part. In the meantime, you can hit the thumbs up button. See you in a while. Time to split. Now, according to the first video I showed you, I can stretch one of these doubles straight away. As you can see, it's elastic. It shrinks back. Now, the other video recommends 15 minutes, the last one 30 minutes. I'll wait 30 minutes for good measure and try with the other double. 30 minutes later, we can try and stretch the second double. It's still elastic, I can tell there is a bit of improvement, but it's still not ideal. It 
it's still not what we are looking for. So what happens now? I will reboil even this one. We wait 24 hours and tomorrow we try again. So I can't stretch straight after boiling. I can't stretch after 30 minutes wait. How long do I have to wait then? Please understand that whatever timing anyone recommends, even me today, would always be generic information for you for the simple reason that nobody on this side of the screen knows what flour you are using. Flour is defined as a structural builder of our dough and it has the biggest influence on the behavior of the dough ball during the whole process, including stretching, of course. So in my case, my recipe, my usual flour, my dough will ferment for around 24 hours and it will be perfect. I know by experience that the gluten will lose its elasticity in favor of its extensibility by tomorrow. So yes, I need two days just to shoot this video, not to mention the editing. I guess this is the right moment to subscribe and let me grow my little channel. After 24 hours, let's see how easy it is to stretch these doubles. The cold one first, it should be this one. Okay, 9.2 degrees. It's 22 degrees, it's way warmer. See, you, you shouldn't really have any issue if your dough is ready and if you are decent at stretching. Besides, if your dough is very hydrated, so I'm sure you fermented it at control temperature, then it could even be recommended to stretch it cold. I'm going a little bit more technical here. If you want to dig deeper, consider booking a session with me from my website. Let's see the comparison with the room temperature one. See the reaction is absolutely the same. So this is the main takeaway here. My dough is fermented for around 24 hours. This is enough most of the time. It's not likely that you will experience any difficulty in stretching after that long. Of course, it is always possible as an exception. I personally encountered one during a one-to-one -one remote session. If that was your case, if this happened to you, whatever the resin time you allowed your dough, then you need to experiment a little. If your dough will snaps back when you stretch it, then next time let's ferment it for a couple of hours longer. I am sure you will see some improvement in the extensibility, but if you don't, guess what? Give it an extra couple of hours next time. On the other end, you don't always need to wait that long, especially if the flour you use is not rich in proteins. For example, most plain flowers here in the UK contain less than 10%. If that's your case, your goal could easily be just two hours or so, maybe three or four at most. However, remember that it's not just a question of time. It's not just a question of volume. You know, it is said, wait until the dough doubles up its sides. Your dough itself, the one you make with your recipe, with your usual flour, will tell you when it's ready. And to know what it actually tells you, there is this video for you to watch.